Hello, my name is Jamie McGowan and I am a special needs mom. That's it. That's my title. The end. Because <laughs> when you're a special needs mom, you really don't have time to do anything else. I have two children with special needs. Aston, my son, was diagnosed with autism at two years old. He was nonverbal at the time, socially delayed, and required therapy. Annalyn, my daughter, has cerebral palsy, gross motor function classification system at the highest level of five for CP, which means she requires us to do 100% of her care. She can't feed herself or go to the bathroom. She can't talk or tell us what she needs. She requires constant supervision due to her inability to care for herself, but also because she has seizures, a reflux issues that causes her to vomit. She requires an intense schedule of doctor's visits, therapies, organizing her med schedules, refill supplies, insurance, equipment, IEP plans, adjustments, surgeries, well checkups, and additional specialists. The list goes on. Currently, Aston is seven years old and in the first grade. He started school at three years old in a program to help him prepare for school. Wow. Annalyn is five and a half and she is in kindergarten. She also started school at three. I also need to mention that I have a third child, Landon. He is neurotypical and in college. He's mine from a previous relationship. It is important that I tell you this because I want you to know that I raised a typical child. Landon was 15 before I had my next child and 17 when I became a special needs mom. The world of being a parent to a typical child and the world of being a parent to a special needs child are not the same. As a special needs parent, you are told you can't. You can't have this because insurance won't cover it. You can't have therapy because you're only allowed 50 visits a year. You can't get this service. You can't get this medication. You can't because there's no wheelchair access. You can't go grocery shopping because how do you push a cart and a wheelchair at the same time? You can't play here because your child is too much. You can't work out here because your child interferes with other children. No babysitters, no help, no flying, no vacations, no friends, no, 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 no. It's a constant tearing down on a special needs mom's soul. But not only the no's and the you can'ts, also the what ifs and the whys and the missed opportunities for my children. The things they'll miss out on because of their disabilities, the hard things they'll go through in life. It's too much for a mommy's heart. So we stay busy and the busyness helps numb the emotional pain. So let's talk about schedule. My day actually starts at night. Every night I prepare everything that the kids are going to need for the next day because school is way too early, so I get it all done at night. So I prepare everything, all of her meds that she needs, her water, her food, everything is done at night, so I don't have to worry about it in the morning. In the morning, I wake up before the kids so they can get everything done and organized and into the car ready to go before I start to get them ready. Then I get them ready, and sometimes I do that while they're even asleep. <laughs> Then it's off to school and now it's time for my stuff to get done. However, most of that consists of going and picking up her, her prescriptions and making doctor's appointments and refilling her prescriptions and getting the things done like uh, making her feed for the day. All that gets done while they're at school. Plus I get my grocery shopping done because you can't grocery shop with a wheelchair and a cart, remember? <laughs> 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 Annalyn has therapy every day after school, so we go straight home into therapy. Is that funny? <laughs> <laughs> Look at you, you're so happy. It. After therapy, she eats, then we cook dinner, then we have a walk or we do outdoor play of some sort. We have baths for each, we feed, get meds ready, get everything ready for the night, and then bed. Annalyn dislikes having therapy right after school. We try to make it fun for her, but she would rather relax and decompress the day. We would love to have therapy around 6 o'clock or 6.30 in the evening, but no therapist wants to work that It would be amazing to have more options for therapy times and days. I tell you all of this so that you can see that we only have two options a day for therapy. 3, 15 p.m. and 6 p.m. And since most therapists don't work past 5 p.m., that leaves 3, 15, 
that's it each day of the week. And keep in mind that Alan has to have PT twice a week, speech twice a week, OT. So her schedule looks like this. Mondays we have right after school at 3.15, like we walk in at 3.14 and at 3.15, the therapist is knocking on the door. And that is um, on Monday, it is PT. Then Tuesday, it is speech. Wednesday, we have OT. Thursday, we have speech. And Friday, we have PT. The OT only gets one day a week because he doesn't work weekends and we only have that day. Since Annalyn's therapies are so important to us, then we schedule those, we, we schedule doctor's appointments and everything around those so that we're home for her therapies. Those are pretty much a high priority for us. Currently, we are blessed with great therapists who are reliable, on time every day, and flexible with their schedules. So all is working like a machine right now. Now I want to tell you um, some things that you probably won't learn in the book, but I guess you will learn them through experience. Please don't tell me what my baby can't do. I hear it enough from doctors and all of them. Just help me learn how to do things to help teach her to do things. Here's an example. Your baby can't hold a spoon. Mm, no thanks. Um, instead, how about here's a tool that will help your baby be able to hold a spoon. Yes. Communication with parents is so important. Be the can when all they're used to hearing is can't. Listen to the parents. We're stuck in our own little world and we don't know what we don't know. So if you hear a parent talking about a problem, step in and maybe offer some resources. That helps a ton. One day I was struggling. My daughter's therapist was in the house and she was pushing so many goals on me and it just felt overwhelmed and I started to cry. And that's when she um, told me about respite services. I had never heard of respite services before um, and it was very valuable to us. So I'm so thankful that she listened to my concerns and offered a valuable resource. Include everyone. Oh my gosh, this is huge. Please don't put on all the goals on one person. If there's a sibling or another parent in the house, give them a goal to work on with the child instead of having one person do all the work. One goal per person is way better than one person having three goals. Being a special needs mom, we're secluded. We're too busy for friendships or we just don't have enough people in our lives that get it. We're typically writing a thin line of emotional stability. You may be the only adult interaction that we get. Just listen to us. I know that some of us moms will ramble on and on, but that is huge for us to just be able to talk to someone. So just listen. Try to offer hope if you can. My daughter's therapist became one of my best friends in life. So it's important. You're not only there to help the child become a better version of themselves, but you're also helping the parent become a healthier person for herself too. I'm not the type of person that takes no for an answer. It just doesn't work for me. So I've fought back over the years and now there's no point of telling me no or I can't. It just doesn't work for me because actually I can. After being told that our insurance would not cover equipment, therapies, and even medications, I fought back. I did some research, I advocated, and I didn't give up. And I fought back and I found a loophole that got my daughter an abundance of yeses. And we got all the equipment, all the therapies we needed, all the supplies and medications and everything that she needs. When the schools told me that they didn't have what I wanted for my children, I bought the book. And I studied it and I learned the proper terminology for these meetings and I got my children what they needed. After being told that my daughter just can't do the things other kids can do because there's no wheelchair access, oh honey, we don't let that stop us. We go on adventures through the forest. <laughs> Do you like it? We figure out a way to ride the rides. Abandon the wheelchair to get a better view. We don't limit her at all. So now, when someone tells me that I can't, I say, watch me. Do you know who helped me become this fierce, advocating, helpful mom? A therapist who equipped me with resources. Be the reason a parent becomes empowered so they can be the best that they can be for their child. As a therapist, you can build a better world for special needs families. I've seen it. 
Thanks so much for listening to my story. I hope it has empowered you today. If you would like to follow along our story and see more about Anna Lynn and Aston, you can follow us on social media. You can just search Jamie McGowan on most social media platforms. Look on YouTube for Anna Lynn McGowan. Y'all have a great day and thanks for having me.